Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my top 10 fragrances of all time. These are what is currently in heavy rotation for me. I went through my collection because I was just curious <laughs> myself and I think it's between 160 and 170 fragrances I'm currently at and I definitely need to do a declutter soon. However, I went through them all. These are my top 10 picks. This is what I reach for most often. They're my most used fragrances, my absolute favorite. You will see when you watch this fragrance video, kind of the fragrances that I'm gravitating towards, what I really enjoy, what I love. And overall, I would say I'm a sweet musky girl. That's the kind of fragrances that I tend to love. However, I really don't discriminate for fragrance, I love everything. I love floral, I love men's colognes. I often take my husband's fragrances and wear those on myself. Like, I love everything, okay? These top 10 truly hold a special place in my heart and I just cannot wait to dive into this video. I do have some honorable mentions that I was considering mentioning in this video, but I feel like it's solid. I feel like I don't even need to mention anything else though there's other ones obviously in my collection I use all the time. I could go on and on about fragrances, however, you're here for the top 10. So I'm including this in my top 10 series. I always talk about a fragrance being top 10, top 10. And I figured, you know what? Let's show you the top 10. So thank you so much for clicking on this video, for spending some time with me today. And if you've not already, I'd absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button, the bell to be notified of all my future videos. And if you wanna see a fragrance declutter, please let me know in the comments because I need to do that. There's a lot sitting that I could definitely donate that I would love to have some others utilize. But without further ado, Let's jump into my top 10. I think this is the first video with my little fringy pieces. I didn't wanna go full on bang cause I was a little bit nervous, but this is kind of where I'm starting at to see if maybe I can work my way into some more layered look cause I wanted something fun to frame the face. So let me know, do you like the hair? Do you like the new little bang situation? I've never had fringe like this. So it's different for me, I'm getting used to it. My first fragrance here, not a lot of people will have heard about. This one is in a popular brand. This one I actually found because of Babs Beauty. Her and I have the same love for gourmand scents. So we both like something really sweet. And this is one of the sweetest fragrances that I personally own. And I loved this find because it reminds me of a KKW heart that was limited edition that I personally really loved. This is probably my most juvenile, I'd say, fragrance that I have in my collection, but I still love it because I love a sweet, fruity scent. So this is from Rebel Scents. It is Drippin' Gold. The packaging is super cute on this. This kind of reminds me of if it would be a Kylie Cosmetics <laughs> fragrance, honestly. Let me pull up the notes for you. This fragrance is classified as a fruity gourmand. The top notes are bergamot and mandarin. The middle is coconut and gardenia and the base is vanilla and musk. With the base being vanilla musk, sign me up. That's the kind of base that I always want. I want something with that gourmand vanilla scent with musk and then add some fruit in there. We're pretty much good to go <laughs> for a fragrance for me. But as I said, this is definitely my most I would say juvenile of my fragrances only because it is so fruity and this smells kind of like a teen scent, I would say. It's not very sophisticated. However, I have no issue. I wanna spray all these, but I have no issue wearing this on its own. And I'm actually almost done this, but it smells like a KKW heart, which was my personal favorite when she came out with those little hearts. And it smells exactly like that, but has a better wear to it and I'm able to actually repurchase it. So I wanted to start here, even though I'm saying it's more of a juvenile scent, I don't think that is a bad thing, honestly. Sometimes I don't want something so in your face or super sophisticated, something just easy wearing and just smells yummy and fruity. It's just an easy to wear scent. The 10th place spot where I wanted to start off is this one and thank you to Babs Beauty for recommending it to me. It was a total blind buy, but she knew how much I love the KKW fragrance and this was a safe bet for me. So if you like that heart like I do, pick this up. It's literally identical, but better. My ninth place spot, I put two variations of this in this spot because I could go either way 
with this. I'm gonna try and decide in this video which one is officially my ninth place spot, but we have the YSL Libra fragrances and I have the original and I have the Intense. The Intense is newer to me, but I'm just gonna quickly spray these just to kind of determine which one I feel out of these two is my favorite. This is actually kind of an easy decision for me just by spraying them. And as much as I love original Libra, it is such a beautiful fragrance and I always say it wrong, sorry, <laughs> ahead of time. I love the intense version because this one has more vanilla in it. You're gonna see this trend here, but vanilla adding that kind of gourmand element. Intense is a vanilla white floral lavender. YSL Libra is also an amber. However, predominantly it is white floral citrus lavender. I get a ton of lavender from both of them. It is a predominant note, but I just feel like lavender is a little less and more of that vanilla in the intense, which is my preference because I do get more floral in the original, which isn't my preference. I do love it though. And I think that's what really kind of ties everything together is that floral element, especially that lavender. It's just very heavy in the original, whereas adding that Madagascar vanilla tonka bean, it just really provides that base for intense, which I personally gravitate a little bit more towards. So a really beautiful fragrance, one that I highly recommend to check out. YSL is high end, but it's not niche level. I feel like it's a very niche fragrance though, just because of how well everything goes together. It is a standout in terms of high-end fragrances for me. I feel like often for those higher-end fragrances, a lot can just smell similar. And this one is truly a standalone for me. I just love it so much. It gives sophistication. It gives this time of year specifically. This is more so a nighttime or fall winter scent specifically for me. I wouldn't wear this year round, though you'll see majority of my fragrances that I'm gonna mention are actually year round scents for me, which makes it a top 10 because I reach for them so often. But for me personally, when I smell fragrance, I typically get seasonal for certain fragrances, except for the ones that are year round, which happen to be my <laughs> top 10 personal favorites. I guess that's something that I really gravitate towards, something that I can wear all the time, regardless of the occasion or any time of the year. But this one specifically is more so a fall winter scent for me, still beautiful really luxe in its projection, its wear. It's just a really well done formulation that I recommend to anyone looking for a seasonal fragrance that wants to smell super sophisticated and I would definitely smell both of them. But if you like less of a floral note to it, but still floral, I would go with Intense just because of that added vanilla to it. I feel like that smell just makes me smell like I know what I'm doing. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a very sophisticated, lovely scent. And then for my eighth place spot, I actually discovered that I like a different variation of this more, but I'm gonna mention this here. This is Burberry Her. I went down a huge rabbit hole with this fragrance. And it's funny because the nose behind this one is Francis Kirk John. I always have trouble saying his name, but MFK is the nose behind the Burberry Her. And I love, this. This one is super heavy in an artificial strawberry sort of way. So I actually discovered that I personally gravitate towards the Elixir more, which is a pink bottle, I believe. You can't see through it. This is the original one that initially was released and I still absolutely love it. But if I were to recommend one for you guys, it would be the Elixir. It's just my personal favorite of all the Burberry ones, though I've tried the Eau de Toilette, all the variations at this point I've actually tried. So I can let you know which one is my favorite of all of them because they've really done different flankers in that scent are really different. They'll pull similarities from Burberry Her. So if you like that one, I think you would like the other ones. The original is so good. If you like strawberry, this is the most strawberry scent in my collection or of any fragrance that I've ever smelled. It is so predominantly strawberry to me. That's the top note that just stands out is just I always smell strawberry, but with musk, which is what I love. Add that musk to that fruity quality. So I'm gonna go over the notes quickly with you guys. There is a ton to this. It's classified as a fruity, sweet, musky scent, a floral, fruity gourmand. The top notes are strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, sour cherry, black currant, mandarin orange, and lemon. 
there's a lot here. <laughs> Middle is violet and jasmine, and the base is musk, vanilla, cashmere, woody notes, oak moss, amber, and patchouli. I just wanted to note that I really dislike the note of patchouli. However, in this, I don't smell it at all. It just kind of grounds the scent in the base and is very lightly done. So if you get headache induced by patchouli like I do, I don't notice it at all, at all in that whether I spray it, the dry down, nothing. And for this, actually, now that I mentioned the dry down, is what really sells it for me because you get that pungent artificial strawberry note off the top and it really just, you have to let it settle in the skin. <laughs> and this is one of the few ones that I feel like is personally a one sprayer because I feel like if I use too much of that, I could get a headache just because it's so potent. At least on me, it's one of my strongest projections and one of my most long wearing potent fragrances that I have in my collection, which is shocking because some of the other ones I'm gonna mention I thought would be more, but for whatever reason, Burberry Hair always lasts the longest on me and I just smell it all day. My seventh place spot, is a dupe that I have from Okcha. And if you've never heard about the brand Okcha, they do dupes for high-end niche fragrances. And literally, when I tell you that I've smelt the originals of these fragrances and their dupes, I cannot tell a difference. And for Okcha, they actually do the extrait for them, which is a higher concentration. So I feel like these actually you need less. They last longer, they have better projection, and oftentimes they do it better, exceedingly better than their original counterparts. So I just wanted to mention that here in case you like the original, but I've smelt originals and I just always gravitate towards Okcha because they do it better and it's way cheaper. <laughs> you can get these for way, way cheaper. So I've talked about Okcha for a long time. I should honestly reach out to them <laughs> and see if I could get a coupon code for you guys. Oh yeah, and speaking of coupon codes, they also might have a Sephora fragrance sale around this time. It's usually around like December 13th where US gets 20 and Canada gets 15. So who knows if Canada is gonna get the discount, but just hold off purchasing until that fragrance event, if we happen to have it. I'm not sure if we are this year, because who knows after that Sephora sale that happened, but I will have information for that listed below too. But for Okcha, I have two fragrances here, and they're the versions of Baccarat Rouge 540. They have seven, which is the Baccarat Rouge 540, and then they have Orphic, which is the extrait version of it. My apologies if I'm saying it wrong, I always do. To me, I actually gravitate towards the extrait one more, only because it has this almond quality to it, and I find it to be sweeter than original Baccarat Rouge 540. So that is why I personally like that one more. I find the original is way more popular than this one. So that's kind of why I like it too, because it's a little bit different, but it has that almond to it, which I'm really attracted to. So that's the one I'm gonna recommend to you guys. If you want a great dupe version, get the Okcha one. However, I'll have both linked below in case you want to have the original, but I highly recommend Okcha. And Baccarat Rouge 540, I feel like is a lot of people's top fragrance. However, it's not as high as I thought it would be. When I was looking at all my fragrances, I'm like, actually, it's not as high as some of these other ones that I just gravitate towards more because as of lately, I feel like a lot of people, you can smell that out when you go out, like everyone's wearing that scent. So that kind of has led me away from it, but I do much prefer the extra, which is classified as an amber almond woody scent. The top notes are jasmine, saffron, orange, marigold. The middle is ambroxan and evernil. The base is cedarwood, ambergris, and fir balsam. This one, extremely long lasting. I could spray it on my clothes. I could wash my clothes and I could still smell it on my clothes. This one is probably the most long lasting of any fragrance that I personally have in my collection. A lot of the fragrance I mention are feminine leaning. However, this one I do feel is unisex. It's very well-rounded, well-blended. Just the notes of it all complement each other really nicely, but I predominantly get that almond, which makes it really different from anything that I'm gonna recommend to you. So that's what I'm really drawn to in this scent get a ton of compliments on this scent and it's super sophisticated. So it's one of those great ones. If you're going out to a really nice occasion 
I'm gonna reach for that scent because it's so sophisticated and nice. You have a good scent bubble with it too. Not too overpowering, I feel, but that almond just really does it for me. So I love to wear it just on a night out. It's my favorite night out fragrance. And then, do you wanna smell sickeningly sweet? <laughs> like to the point where, I don't know, some people don't like this and some people absolutely love it. I'm obviously a love. I've had the original and I've used up the entire original. I plan on purchasing it again, but I do have the Okja version as well, just because I wanted to test out some of the fragrances that I had next to Okja and see if they're just as good. This one smells identical to Killian Love Don't Be Shy. It is Okja's Sweet Addict. And I do believe they have different packaging now, but I cannot get enough of how sugary sweet this fragrance is. <laughs> this, you have to love sweet. It is the sweetest fragrance that I'm gonna recommend to you guys. It is so loved. As I said, I went through a whole one of it and I don't do that often. So this one could very well be even higher up in my fragrance ranking, but right now I just haven't been reaching for it as much. Killian Love Don't Be Shy is classified as a sweet white floral vanilla. It's an amber fragrance, go figure. Top notes are neroli, bergamot, pink pepper, coriander, Middle is orange blossom, honeysuckle, jasmine, iris, rose, and the base is sugar, vanilla, caramel, musk, civet, labdanum. Again, apologies for any mispronunciations, but this is a very sweet gourmand scent. It is feminine leaning. It is just sugary, sugary sweet for this one. That's what I get. I get the sugar, vanilla, a little bit of musk. I don't surprisingly get much of the floral elements. The base of this just truly takes over for me. It is sugar in a bottle. <laughs> That's what it smells like to me, but I absolutely love it. But again, that is like a sickeningly sweet scent. So that goes to a complete opposite side of the spectrum for typical scents I like to wear. It's absolutely the most sweet. Typically I like something a little bit more balanced than that. I still love it. It's in that place for a reason. I use it more than Baccarat Rouge 540, which was surprising. I was deciding where those two kind of fall. And I definitely love Sweet Attic more because I've actually used up an entire Killian myself. So it's truly a great one to check out if you like the sweetest of sweet scents. And it was rumored that that was Rihanna's signature scent for a while. She was apparently the best smelling person in the world. So let that sit with you for a while and let you know how good that kind of scent is. <laughs> Going into my top five, these all have change places over the course of whenever I've discovered them. I've loved all of these as a number one at some point. I've used them as my number one fragrance. Even Love Don't Be Shy, Baccarat Rouge, Burberry, those have all actually been number ones at some point. <laughs> in my fragrance. So my top 10, I just absolutely love. As you can tell, they're my top 10 for a reason. And my fifth place spot has recently over the years, I've used this less, but this was my signature scent for many, many years. This is the Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom Cologne. And I love this because it smells so cozy and comforting. I always describe this scent as happiness in a bottle. It's truly happiness captured in a scent and just feels like a warm hug is my best way to describe it. And I know I don't describe things like a traditional fragrance expert would describe things as. They're more so very personal how I describe things, but that is, for me personally, happiness in a bottle is the best way to describe it. It also would make a really good home scent. And typically I'm not the type of person who would wanna wear something that could smell like a really nice candle or a home scent. However, this is very like a homey type scent in either a hand wash, a candle, anything like that. I feel like it just smells so good and so welcoming, I feel. Those are the kind of scents that I really like. Something that just smells super comforting. So Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom is one of the ones that I top recommend. And I'm just gonna quickly go over the notes, which are super simple. It is Cardamom, Mimosa, and Tonka Bean. This is a very warm, fresh, and spicy scent. It's elegant. And as I said, feels like happiness in a bottle is what I wrote down <laughs> to describe this. It is a yellow floral, warm, spicy, powdery, which I don't personally get really powdery from this, but that's what it's described as. And it's an amber floral fragrance. I don't think any of my fragrances don't Describe like an amber <laughs> for the most part. It's like my motherly scent. I feel like my kids, if they were to ever smell any of my fragrances, they would be like, this is mom. 
to them because I've worn this so incredibly much and it just feels comforting. It's one of those scents that I always want to be remembered as, I feel, because it's so lovely. And for me, Jo Malone doesn't tend to last long on my skin. However, more than other of their colognes, that one actually lasts on me. So I highly recommend it for those reasons. And then going into my fourth place spot, this is actually an affordable dupe for Baccarat Rouge 540, as people have claimed. However, I think it smells quite a bit different, but it falls in the same family. And this is the Ariana Grande Cloud. And I'm almost done my bottle. And if I were to recommend one, I would go intense only because it smells exactly the same as the original. It just lasts longer. And that's the only reason why I recommend that. I don't like the packaging of these because they do feel also quite juvenile. However, the scent isn't, it smells a niche. Celebrity fragrance done right. I love Ariana Grande fragrance. And I actually was gonna mention one of her new ones is the Mod Vanilla as a honorable mention because I wear this all the time and I get so many compliments on that one. However, this is probably my most complimented fragrance to date is Ariana Grande Cloud. Ariana Grande Cloud is a sweet lactonic vanilla. It's classified as a floral fruity gourmand. And the top notes are lavender, pear, bergamot, middle is whipped cream, praline, coconut, vanilla orchid, and the base is musk and woody notes. So I get a lot of the creaminess in this fragrance. I do get the coconut too, so I could see how this could be maybe summer leaning. However, this is a year round scent for me. So is all the ones I'm actually mentioning. The only one that's seasonal for me is the YSL. So this one, year round, I'd wear it morning, night, whenever. I'm always wearing this, basically. I bathe myself in this. And recently, I've actually been adding a little bit of 68 from Sol de Janeiro to it, which is supposed to be like a fragrance mist version of Ariana Grande Cloud and Baccarat Rouge. Like these are all in the same family. So I feel like they're very complimentary and I just like to add a little bit of this in. I always get so many compliments on these two combined. So I just wanted to mention that it's one of my favorite scents from Sol de Janeiro, but not my favorite one, which you'll be actually seeing. But I wanted to mention it in my top 10 because it is one of my most used and I honestly don't, ever wear Ariana Grande Cloud without mixing it with a little bit of that now. I'm just addicted to the combo. I saw it on TikTok and I've just been <laughs> following it ever since. And then for my third place spot, top three, this fragrance for me is so special. And this fragrance company is what I'm most excited for. I'm excited for everything from this fragrance company and it is Letta Fragrance. They recently came out with their 18 Vanilla Nera. However, 22 Auras, is in my top three. That's how much I love this scent. It is truly so unique and special, so wearable, so comforting. It's literally everything I want all in one. The packaging is stunning. I don't smell anyone wearing this around me, so I feel just super special when I wear it. It's like my most special fragrance, I feel. I just love it so much. Everything about it, I love. There's not one thing, it wears good. It has perfect projection for me. It's not headache inducing. The note profile is so well blended. I'm gonna read that to you now, but it is so good. So this is actually classified as a powdery sweet musky scent. It's an amber floral. I don't get the powdery, I just get the smoothness of it. That's one thing Letta does so well is the just smoothness of their fragrances. They're so smooth. The top is pear leaf, pink pepper, wild freesia, middle is sheer jasmine, lily of the valley, orris, and the base is sandalwood, marshmallow musk, touch of moss. That combination, I personally would look at it and not think that I would like the fragrance. Just because a lot of times with lily of the valley too, like I only ever smell that. And I just wouldn't think because it's not my typical notes that I gravitate towards because it's not overly fruity, I guess, that I would think, oh yeah, I would love this scent. However, I love this combination of notes. It is so beautiful, so perfect. And I just think that if you wanted a unique scent, highly, highly recommend 22 Auras and Letter Fragrance as a brand. Like they just do it for me. I love them. I had to mention it in my third place spot. It is that good to me and one that I highly, 
highly recommend. They have travel versions now. So if you're unsure because it is a blind buy, get the travel, get back to me because I wanna know your opinion, but 22 Auras, I recommend all day, every day to everyone is so good. I would never in my life think that a fragrance mist would make it into my top 10, but this did it. This from Sol de Janeiro is everything to me. It is the Sol de Janeiro Charosa 40. It is a black, amber, plum, and vanilla woods. It's for hair and body. You can see the indent that I have on this. This is my deodorant I wear. This is my body wash I use. This is my fragrance mist that I will spray on literally anything I'm wearing. <laughs> because it is so good. I just always wanna smell like this pretty much. My hair, I think nine times out of 10 will smell like this. It will be lingering in my hair. It is so amazing. And I've recently actually been mixing it with an old favorite, which I have to mention in this video, but it is the Givenchy Hot Couture, but it's the Eau de Toilette. And often I don't recommend the Eau de Toilette or personally use, I usually like the EDP. However, the EDT in Hot Couture is phenomenal. They have since changed their packaging though. This is old packaging, <laughs> but this, Reminds me of 40, just in a perfume. If you like 40, I feel like you would really like Hot Couture. It's one of those fragrances that I personally can tell if someone's wearing. It's a signature scent, one that I literally wore for years and years and years of my life. And I just feel like this is where I'm at in life now. <laughs> but it's funny because they are very similar and it's just what I'm drawn to. The notes of this, are just perfection to me. I literally think this is the most delicious edible fragrance ever. It says it's vanilla fruity sweet and it's a floral fruity gourmand. Surprise, surprise. The top is plum, black amber, cassis, middle is orchid, jasmine, and the base is vanilla, woodsy notes, and musk. <laughs> We should just create a vanilla woodsy note musk base for all my scents. <laughs> Add a little bit of amber in there and some fruit and we're good to go, apparently, with everything that I love. So highly recommend this. I literally will always smell like this every single day of my life just because my deodorant and body wash is that fragrance. So at some point in the day, I'm smelling like 40. My number one fragrance though, this did something to me. This changed me in ways when I, first discovered this fragrance, I'm eating my hair, one second. Not used to the bang life. Where do I start with this fragrance? I initially discovered this from Jaclyn Hill and I do feel like her and I often have a similar fragrance love, I feel, but this one, I was just shocked, again, by the notes to see that this is something that I loved even more. The family on here is Floral Musk and the scent is Clean Reserve Skin. So this, fragrance for me. I don't even know how to describe this. This does something to me. And I'm not a clean fragrance lover. So that's kind of this brand I never really was drawn to. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, clean. I don't want to smell like laundry. <laughs> like I want to smell like something else, but let me just describe this and you will see. It is a sweet, musky, salty scent. It's a floral, woody musk. So the notes are praline, musk, salt, tonka bean, and leather. This is inoffensive. It's perfect for every day. It is comforting. It is layerable. It is everything that I want a fragrance to be. I personally feel like this is unisex. However, I feel like when I was researching it, it is more feminine leaning, but I don't know about that. I get cologne vibes from this. That's what I smell. like. I could smell this on Charles and I could smell it on myself and I would love it just as much, but I am so attracted to the scent, I think. That's what it is, it's an attraction. <laughs> I think I'm in love with the scent of this. If you could be attracted to a scent, this is what I'm attracted to. <laughs> That's my best way to describe it, but it's so comforting, but so sexy to me. I feel like it is a sexy scent, but it smells like you just got it out of the shower. You just naturally smell so good and clean, I guess, but it's the perfect musk. It is close to the skin though. So if you don't like a skin scent, this is truly like you have to come into my personal space <laughs> to be able to smell this one, at least on my body. It doesn't project, it doesn't have an overly great wear to it. But with all that being said, it's still my favorite. It is so good, it is so comforting, and it's just 
non-offensive. It is like the best scent. Just everything I could possibly want in a fragrance, genuinely. It's easy to wear. This is the only fragrance I feel like if I had to pick one, if I had to, because that's hard. When you're a fragrance lover like me that's hard, I would pick this one. This is my number one. I love it that much. It is so good. I recommend it to literally everyone. If you wanna know what I'm attracted to, <laughs> basically, pick up that scent and smell it. I'm so weird, but it's so true. That is it for my top 10 fragrances. I feel like I actually made this video quite long. I'm glad I didn't go into all my honorable mentions. You can tell I'm a fragrance lover. These are my top 10, my most used. I love all of these so, so much. I would recommend any single one of these to you. Fragrance is so personal, but if you see the notes, my description hopefully helped a little bit, <laughs> baby. And you can see maybe you like some of these too, then we probably fall into the same sort of love for fragrance. And I feel like all these kind of are very similar in a lot of ways. So I do have a specific sort of fragrance profile that I'm typically drawn towards. So so if you have that same sort of nose for fragrance that is similar to mine, I would recommend any of these to you. So my only ask is that if you notice that we are fragrance twins, please let me know in the comment section below your recommendations. I share with you, you share with me, that's how it goes here. We give the best recommendations for each other. So thank you so much for clicking on this video for wanting to know my top 10 fragrances. These are the best of the best to me, ones that I will constantly repurchase and always have in my collection. I just cannot see these ever going anywhere unless they get discontinued, which all my stuff that I love does. <laughs> so hopefully not these. So thank you guys again for watching, for spending time with me today. If you've not already, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button, the bell to be notified of all my future videos, and I will see you guys in my next one.